Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and yes, Microsoft has released an operating system for the Raspberry Pi or actually other microcontrollers out in the internet. And the uh, first thing that we need to do to get our Raspberry Pi 2, because that's what I'm doing, uh, is we need to go into the site. Plus, you need to get Windows 10 in Insider Preview, the latest build, which is actually 174. Uh, we're going to go to this site right here. I'm going to place the link at the bottom of the description for you guys so you guys can go check it out and follow along. You want to click on uh, Get Now uh, or Get Started. And once that loads up, you're going to get this beautiful, nice little page with uh, many options to pick from. Uh, I purchased the Ra Raspberry Pi uh, 2 microcontroller uh, for me to do this stuff for you guys. But again, you have many options. Pick the controller that you need. Now let's go pick our Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, once you click on that, very simple. You need to have Windows 10 Insider Preview, the latest build. You actually need to get into the Microsoft Connect sites. Uh, if you don't have an account, you can sign in or sign for an account. Uh, you can click here. If you click here, it's going to show you the step-by-step -step instructions of how to retrieve your Microsoft Connect account. It's very simple. I think it's free, but if you do have an Outlook or live or hotmail account, you could probably get in it with no problem. So uh, you click on the Microsoft Connect account. I'm already logged in into my Windows 10 machine as my uh, as myself with my live dot account. It's automatically going to take me into my Microsoft Connect. Now you're going to have two surveys that it's mandatory for you to uh, actually read. You don't have to read, uh, but you have to accept and submit it. If you do not submit these two or agree to these two surveys, you're not going to get a chance to go and download the file to uh, burn into your micro SD and embed it into your uh, microcontroller. For us, it's going to be uh, my Raspberry Pi 2. So we're going to do the last one, and it's the Core Insider Preview, E-U-L-A, uh, E-U-L-A. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going on the bottom. I'm going to agree. I really didn't read it at all. I probably sold my soul. Uh, just hit submit. Once you hit submit, you're good to go. Now you're able to uh, return back to the home page. Uh, it's nothing there because you already accepted all the service, but you're able to go now to the download section. Now, depending on what uh, microcontroller you're using, I am using the Raspberry Pi uh, 2. And click on that. It's going to take you to a link to download the file. Now, it's pretty big. So if you have a huge uh, bandwidth uh, internet speed, you can actually download it with no problem. And uh, it's 482.62 megabytes. And I'm actually going to save it into the desktop. And once that saves to the desktop and it's done, I'm going to uh, start back the video and we're going to continue. All right, guys, so we're back. Uh, the download has completed. That's awesome. I'm going to close this up, and uh, we're going to go back into our primary page. It's not this one. Let's go to our second tab. And within our second tab, it wants us to have our Raspberry Pi 2 because that's what we're doing. We need to have a 5-volt micro USB power supply. Um, for this, you need an 8-gig SD card, uh, which is a class 10. You also need to open up an administrative uh, command prompt. And we need to format our SD card. Now, they kind of warn you that you cannot do this within a virtual machine. You have to have a physical machine. But I'm actually running this machine within a uh, Parallels, actually a VM Fusion with a Mac environment. And when you plug in an SD card within a Mac, it actually gives you an option. Do you want to do it on your Windows or you want to do it on your Mac? So I can, as you can see, you saw my Mac dock there. Uh, I'm extracting the files into the desktop, which is pretty awesome. And once this extracts, we are going to uh, actually, I'm going to open up a command prompt, admin style. Remember, you have to have an administrative rights when you're running these commands, because if not, it's not going to work properly. You're going to get the nice little user account control. I'm going to accept it. And uh, once I accept that, I should be getting a command prompt pretty soon. But uh, there it goes. Command prompt is up and running. Uh, let's uh, drag this to the side and see if the extracting of all the files within this beautiful zip file that we downloaded has finished. It still hasn't finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside the command prompt and I'm going to do the disk parts command because again on the instructions on the website they want you to do a list part uh, command. Once you get the list part command up and running you're going to get a nice little uh, disk parts command prompt and within there we are actually going to get um, 
get uh, the list of the disk. As you can see, all the extracts files, you got the, the flash.ffu, which is the actual file that we're going to apply the image into our SD card, which is awesome. So what we're going to do is within our command prompt, you're going to do a list disk command. The list disk command is going to give us a list of all the stuff that's attached to this virtual machine. Uh, it looks like my SD card is disk number two, which is awesome. And, and let's make sure it's right there. There you go. Remote disk F is my SD card. Remember, it's a micro SD card. You got to have it at least eight gigs. Class 10, the reason for class 10, because class 10 has a higher write and read speed. So you need that stuff. Okay, so the next command is we need to exit out. Once we exit out, we need to use a DISM.exe file. And we need to actually apply an image. And the image is actually the flash.ffu. Uh, what I'm actually doing is copying the path of it and uh, we're going to just go in here and copy that entire path because you need to tell your apply image attribute with the command that this is where the FFU file is located. So as you can see, I did the DISM.exe with a forward slash apply image and I did a apply image file in the location of the file. And then from there, we're doing apply drive. Then we need to do a backslash, backslash, period, backslash, physical drive, and then the number that the disk is from. Now, for us, it's disk two, so we need to do a physical drive number two, space, and then a forward slash of skip platform format check. Now, it looks like I made a mistake. And let's take a look at the coding and see what mistake I made. Well, let me expand this a little bit so I can see the entire coding. And it looks like I probably made a little error. Okay, so I found the error and it's the extra space. There it goes, it's applying the image. It's gonna take some time. Once it applies the image, we're almost there to insert our SD card inside our Raspberry Pi device. All right, guys, so the image was already applied to our SD card. This is awesome, super excited. As you can see, the operation completed successfully. And we're gonna exit out our command prop. Let's go inside our uh, this PC. So I'm gonna open up our Fire Explorer we're going to go into uh, disk PC and within our disk PC, as you can see, it's an 8 gig and it took a lot of space and that's awesome. These are all the files that you need. Uh, I'm actually going to right click on this bad boy and I'm going to eject it safely. And once it's ejected, uh, that's it. We're going to take our micro SD card and we're going to place it inside our Raspberry and boot it up. All right, guys. So we finally finished configuring our micro SD card. Remember, you need to have a uh, physical machine. That's what Microsoft is actually telling us. We need a physical machine uh, that has Windows 10, the latest build. I think the latest build is 174 uh, to configure our micro SD. Now, with the video, I did everything on the virtual machine. I kind of cheated because on the Mac side, when you're using a virtual machine, it gives you an option when you're doing a USB or a micro SD or a SD card. It kind of asked whether you want to use that uh, particular media on the virtual machine or on the Mac. So that's how I cheated, if you guys were wondering. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the kind of stuff that I need or um, stuff that I'm using to get us up and running with our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so what am I using? Well, I'm using the micro SD card that we configured. Awesome. Definitely need a Raspberry Pi 2. I have a uh, charger, which the charger, I didn't purchase it. I'm using an LG charger. The reason why I'm using this particular one because it has a 1.5 uh, volt and it works well with the Raspberry Pi. I have a keyboard. Doesn't, ma doesn't matter which one you have as long as the USB because uh, most likely you're going to be booting into a Windows operating system. I have a HDMI to HDMI, mail to mail, so I can plug it into a on-screen camera monitor. Now this on-screen monitor is going to be upgraded to a nice little display that's going to be hooked up to one of the display ports um, on the Raspberry Pi, so I'm super excited to get that pretty soon. And we have a uh, USB mouse so we can plug it into the Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. So we're, we're, I'm, I'm going to take out the Raspberry Pi out of the box. Again, I purchased this bad boy just for this video as well as future videos that I'm going to be doing for you guys. So I'm super excited. So let's take it out. Awesome. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the keyboard. I'm going to hook it up to one of these USBs right here. Awesome. I'm going to take the mouse and I'm going to hook it up to the top 
portion of the USB ports. I'm going to take the HDMI and with the HDMI just take one in and you want to plug it in on the HDMI port. Awesome. And then the other end you want to plug it into whatever display. You could probably use a projector or you could use your TV if it has an extra HDMI. So that's awesome. And I am going to plug the power in. Then I'm going to take the micro SD card, the one that we use in the beginning of the video. And we're actually going to place this at the bottom. So at the bottom right here, that's where the chip goes. Uh, the wording on the SD card goes facing you. And then we're going to just stick it in there. Awesome. And uh, we're going to do is turn our on-screen camera or monitor. Cool. And then we're going to plug this up. Okay, it's powered on. Oh, there it goes. It's taking some time. Just be patient, guys. You just have to be patient with these little things. This is, I'm super excited even though it's booting up. This is awesome. It looks like it does take some time. It says right here, it says, uh, mini Win PC, no IP address, no connection. It's okay. Uh, the app, Microsoft, uh, by using the software, you agree to license terms, limited feature versions of the Windows IoT. Uh, it's really small fines. The design exclusively for driver development only. Blah blah blah. It gives you some information. Uh, the Windows Miracast View. Uh, it, let's see. Yeah, so, so far I can't really do anything because it looks like I need to have a touch screen display. But I'm going to try to bring it a little close to you guys on the camera. But it looks like it's rebooting itself again, so that's pretty cool. So I'm just going to let it do its thing. Uh, so off the bat, I already know what I need to do. I need to plug this bad boy into the Ethernet. It looks like it's rebooting itself again. Um, what else I need? I, I definitely need some internet access. It looks like the operating system does need an IP address to finish to finalize itself. But that's it, guys. You need a, what I've used so far was a USB mouse, a keyboard. We got the micro SD that we hooked up at the beginning of the video, an HDMI to mail to mail, uh, and I'm using a, um, a on-screen camera to display the information so I could just configure it. Later on, you're gonna see this on-screen camera. Uh, replaced with an actual dis touchscreen display that's going to be on top of the Raspberry Pi. So I'm excited about that. I am using a LG charger that is providing me a 1.5 volt, which is the capacity that the, mic the microcontroller supports. And uh, that's it, guys. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Leave comments right below. If you have any questions, there it goes. This is awesome. Looks like it's, it's doing its thing. I have the power option there. Oh, and my mouse is moving. How cool is that? Look, my mouse is moving. <laughs> this is pretty cool. This is awesome. This is so awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm going to let you go because I'm super excited. I want to start playing with this thing so I can have more future videos for you guys. Again, leave your comments right below if you want to see anything awesome about this new technology right here. And uh, don't forget about hitting that like button because it does support the video as well as this guy up here. And I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.